Welcome to another video clip from Southampton General Hospital, UK. There is very little audiovisual material about bronchoscopy for thoracic surgery in the public domain, and this was the drive behind this effort of collecting videos of over 15 years worth of experience in thoracic bronchoscopy in one presentation. Although aimed at the thoracic surgeons and trainees in the speciality of cardiothoracic surgery, I have no doubt in my mind that other disciplines would find it very resourceful. Special mention goes to the chest physicians or pulmonologists and trainees in chest medicine who perform bronchoscopy more than we surgeons do, perhaps with an upside down view, but nevertheless would benefit from interpreting the views and capabilities of flexible over rigid bronchoscopy and more importantly to have a gist of what goes in the mind of a thoracic surgeon when performing bronchoscopy. The objective of this video is to show you in an easy and logical way how to identify the bronchopulmonary segmental divisions at bronchoscopy. In addition, I aim to explain the implications of the heart growing into the left chest. I will show what the operator should look for, what is normal and what is abnormal, to help decision taking in the operative and perioperative period. To start with, let's define a bronchopulmonary segment so that we know what we're talking about. A bronchopulmonary segment is a subdivision of a lung lobe. It is pyramidal in configuration with the apex towards the hilum. This is evidenced by the radiology of an infarcted segment. It is surrounded by connective tissue and it has a segmental bronchus, a terminal artery and autonomic nervous supply. The segmental veins are in the intersegmental connective tissue between adjacent bronchopulmonary segments. The bronchi and the arteries do not anastomose, whereas the veins do. If one vein is cut, the segment will find an alternative drainage. If the artery is cut, infarction of the segment ensues. A segment is a structural unit and can be surgically removed. In 1949, the International Congress of Otolaryngology met in London to discuss the nomenclature of bronchopulmonary segments. The Jackson-Huber classification was suggested, but this was not finalized. Lord Russell Brock in 1950 was the reporter of the efforts of the Thoracic Society of Great Britain, which standardized the nomenclature as we know it today in the United Kingdom. The recommendation is to use the anatomical descriptive classification because it is most widely used and less complex. Another popular system in Asia, China, Japan and Korea is the Yamashita Japanese radiological classification which also gives numerical designation to each segment. There are minor differences between the UK and the US nomenclature. The Jackson-Huber calls segment 6 a superior segment, whereas Lord Brock calls it an apical segment. Throughout this series of videos, I will refer to the descriptive system followed by the numerical system for wider international benefit. In the early embryonic stages, arrangement of the bronchial segments was symmetrical. Left side was a mirror image of the right. The right side had 10 bronchial segments and two fissures, and so did the left side. The bronchopulmonary segments follow a standard nomenclature where the abbreviation by the letter R means right, L means left, S means segment and B means bronchus. The oblique fissure equally divides the segments into five above and five below it. The three segments of the upper lobe are named apical or RS1, posterior or RS2, and anterior RS3. The two segments of the middle lobe are named lateral RS4 and medial RS5. The lower lobe follows a general arrangement of apical and common basal. The apical is also known as the superior segment and the common basal comprises four segments. The medial basal RS7, anterior basal RS8, lateral basal RS9 and posterior basal RS10. The heart descends with the diaphragm and pericardium as it is developing and the direction of descent is towards the left chest 
competing for space with the left lung. As a result of this competition, the lung adjusts in several ways, such as displacement, rotation, delayed bronchial branching, and lobe fusion. Squeezing the left lung results in fusion of the middle lobe and the upper lobes into one lobe, which we will call the upper lobe. The fissure between them disappears, but the total number of five segments is preserved. The middle lobe is now known as the lingula and has two segments, and the upper lobe is now known as the upper division or trisegment and has three segments. The heart displaces the middle lobe up, rotating the medial and lateral segments into superior and inferior segmental arrangement of the lingula. We will also see that the tight space forces delayed branching of the bronchi. This is obvious with the upper division bifurcating into two bronchi instead of three. One of the divisions exhibiting the phenomenon of two bananas in one skin, the apico-posterior bronchus. The pushing and squeezing is maximal on the left lower lobe. Subsequently, the medial basal segment, LS7, is completely squashed into a thin sliver and functionally can be ignored. Therefore, the left lower lobe has four instead of five segments. The implications of this segmental loss is that the total number of bronchopulmonary segments is 19 and not 20. This is taken into account when calculating predicted postoperative FEV1 and gas transfer factor. Squeeze for space, the bronchi delay their branching to a little longer, to a more distal location. As a result, the left main bronchus is now longer than the right main bronchus and attaining a more horizontal orientation. Unlike the right upper lobe, which divides into three branches, we note only two divisions in the trisegment or the left upper division. One of the divisions has two bananas in one skin, the so-called apico-posterior division. The third division is the anterior segmental bronchus. The hostile effect of the heart growing into the left chest results in the left lung losing one segment and one fissure. Two lobes are fused into one. The left upper lobe, which has five segments, is now larger than the right upper lobe. The left upper division has three segments. The apical, or LS1, L stands for left and S for segment. The posterior, LS2, and the anterior, LS3. The lingula has two segments, the superior, LS4, and the inferior, LS5. The left lower lobe retains the same general arrangement like the right side, i.e. apical and common basal. The left apical, LS6, is sometimes known as the superior, and the common basal having lost LS7, now has the anterior basal, LS8, lateral basal, LS9, and posterior basal LS10. The oblique fissure on the left separates five segments above it from four below it. 